Right now, Fallout 76 isn't in the best spot. We've been talking about it quite a bit on this channel, looking at some of the lingering issues with this game, specifically around these vault raids, but they really exhibit or give you an outlet to look into some of the larger problems with the game overall. But just yesterday, Bethesda actually shared an article with some of their plans on how to resolve this, a response to some of these major issues, and honestly, it's not horrible. Outside of that, there's been some other news around Fallout 76, a new bug that seems to be completely wiping player characters. We'll talk a bit about that, the legitimacy of it, but also just to be wary, some new hirings at Bethesda that are interesting and a couple of other interesting tidbits of information that you'll probably find handy or useful going forward with the game. If you guys enjoy the Fault 76 content, you can leave a like or subscribe. I have a couple of other videos planned around the game not actually related to new and noteworthy things, one actually taking a deep dive around Wastelanders, so if you're excited for that new game mode or DLC, whatever you want to call it, then you should subscribe because I think you'll enjoy that video. One of the first things I do want to touch on is actually a potential new bug to have popped up that is basically just deleting someone's entire character. This is actually something a lot of you guys have been sharing with me, sending me some of these posts. Basically, there have so far been three or so reports of people in the new vault raid or playing in the new vault raid having some issue or glitch of some kind and then actually just getting a character wipe. One user reports after falling through the world he had this. Someone separately basically got a server disconnect while trying to exit the vault after dying in the vault. And and then after logging back in, he did have this. And the third user does report just leaving the server of the vault raid after dying in the vault raid. So with these kinds of things, you have to be pretty careful. A lot of users do fake reports like this, so it is something to take with a grain of salt. But one consistency and something that has applied even outside of these three reports is the inability for Bethesda to actually restore counts in situations like these. Other users report the same thing, reaching out to Bethesda and getting the same, we have a tool limitation or we are unable to revert or restore your account. I'll have links down below and I'd love to hear from some of you guys if you've experienced something similar, how widespread this bug is or isn't, but it certainly seems like with three separate reports on this singular thing, like there could be a relatively rare glitch that does lead to an entire character wipe connected to these new vault raids. And in fact, one of the things that could give some merit to this being a farce is it doesn't actually seem like anyone has been able to recreate it yet. We have these three instances of people reporting losing characters, but as many users have tried mimicking those exact steps, they haven't gotten anywhere. Again, it's not totally confirmed or concrete, but I know a lot of you guys have been curious or asking me about this, and that's just all I have to say on it. Outside of that, though, looking at the most recent article posted by Bethesda, it's a very apologetic Bethesda, a Bethesda we've definitely seen before and that makes a return here. They start off just describing how the bulk of this article is actually just going over some of the major bug fixes coming in the next patch, that was patch 13. They mentioned that even though this isn't comprehensive, it's not covering every single bug fix that is coming, they still are dedicated to addressing all of the issues they can with each additional patch. And they also say a thank you to everyone who continues to share their feedback and bug reports around the game. So definitely off to a warm and touchy start. Either way, first they talk about Vault 94 rewards, which have certainly been a hot topic as of late. Completing these new vault raids is expensive, it requires a lot of ammo, a lot of health, and thus a lot of stim packs right away. You have to repair all of your items numerous times, and all around it's just a big resource dump. While the rewards aren't necessarily worth it. They mention overall they're going to improve the rewards you receive from completing these vault missions, specifically how you're going to earn more experience, you'll get more components, and you'll get more aid items when you complete a mission. It's fairly vague, that's fairly high level stuff, but fortunately those are a lot of the things you actually do expend while completing this, so potentially a successful completion could offset some of those costs. They then touch on server stability. They don't really say much here. They basically say they're investigating reports of lag and disconnects inside Vault 94, but just also over Overall, and that's a top priority and you know the typical things they say. With this one in particular, it's one of those things that's been a consistent problem. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, but it seems like we need a more overarching or concrete change to actually repair this. A little patch here or there doesn't really seem to be doing the trick, or at least it hasn't been over the past 7-8 months. Another big bug that's been plaguing the game is actually the power armor exit bug. This basically makes it so when you leave power armor, there's just a random chance you're going to get stuck in the floor and will have to restart your game. If you're doing the vault raid when this happens, you'll have to exit the vault raid, losing all progress that you yourself did, and potentially abandoning your team as it's happened to me several times. The response here is interesting. They mention how fixing this bug is actually more complex than they thought, and that they're going to try and fix it as soon as possible, but they don't even give a concrete, yeah, this will be fixed by the next patch. This is fairly major because it's one of those things that a lot of people argue should have been fixed already with patch 12. It's a bug that's been there for a while, and if you're a power armor user, it's not like there's a very 
specific set of circumstances that trigger it, but just if you exit power armor, you're kind of rolling the dice that you will successfully exit and you won't get stuck in the ground. It's a major one, and it's one we hope to see fixed, but I guess it is a bit more understanding if it's not just an easy fix as to why it isn't resolved already. This could be a problem where Bethesda can't figure out what exactly is even causing this issue in the first place. They're going to fix it so you can now earn Possum Scout badges again. This is one of the latter DLCs from the previous DLC waves. Basically, after completing certain events, you'd get a Possum Scout badge and you can redeem this for prizes such as backpacks or other camp items. As of late, for some of these events, they just haven't been working. You'll complete the challenge, put in the effort, but won't get any reward. This is another one that's been here for a while. It's a lingering bug that, for whatever reason, didn't get patched timely. They're making some changes to crops so they can be placed better and it just seems like it'll be an all around improvement to placing crops down. But then they also are bringing several quality of life or other changes. Mods for the scout armor are getting a bit of an overhaul as far as the descriptions go, so it's a bit more clear. An issue with connecting wires in your camp should be cleared up, making it a bit easier and a bit more consistent. But then actually two of the bigger changes that are going to be nice changes to the game, they're now giving us the ability to see what armor or weapon mods we're currently missing. So they say there's going to be a number such as how many mods you have on locked let's say it's five and then how many mods there are in general so let's say that's eight so you'll know there's three more mods you have to find out there they're also bringing a cool change to armor penetration they're making it so non-ballistic weapons will benefit from the armor penetration effect so an anti-armor laser will actually now pierce through energy resistance this might sound simple but energy weapons in this game are absolute trash pretty much unusable because they're so bad this could really turn that around it's not clear how big of an impact this will have but some that could really benefit from this are things like the flamer, shish kebab, and game, or even the assaultron head, which already does good damage, but this will really up that, potentially making it not only viable, but actually pretty good. Definitely a good time to start buying up some of these legendaries before everyone realizes their value increase. At the end, they mentioned they're going to be making overarching quality of life improvements to the public event system in Fallout 76, but they're going to be going more into that next week. Also, there's a legendary item sale, the legendary vendor in game. So overall, I think this is good. Bethesda did this article in a really good way, just laying out the current issues with the game, some of the big ones, and explaining the fixes they're planning and when we can actually expect them, and for some explaining why it's a bit more difficult or why we don't have a fix just yet, although they definitely should have explained more with server stability and disconnects considering how large of a problem that is. And although on one hand I definitely appreciate this communication, I think it's good, a lot of these issues again just aren't new. Many of these bugs and the ones that they're finally fixing have been here for literally weeks if not months at this point, definitely long enough that they should have been fixed in previous updates. It's good that we're seeing these things getting addressed and fixed finally, but it's really hard to get excited or be happy about these when it almost feels like it's late. I'm not super happy that they're finally getting to some of these issues, I would have been a lot happier if they were fixed in a prompt manner. With the Vault 94 awards, you definitely can argue that is in a prompt manner, but to me at least some of these other bug fixes feel like they're long overdue and should have been addressed a while ago. To some degree, it almost feels like there might be a staff problem, like maybe 10 people working on bug fixing the game while in reality you need 20 people doing that job. That's pure speculation, we don't know exactly what's the cause of some of these issues or why some of these updates contain additional bugs, but if it actually is a staff problem, it does seem like Bethesda Game Studios Austin, the people working on Fallout 76, actually have been hiring. There's a variety of job listings, several of these only being posted a couple of days ago or in the past couple of weeks. Things like quest designers, a UI engineer, one that would be particularly useful is a build engineer, basically assuring the quality of each subsequent build of this game, something that has been a pretty big problem. But either way, some of these more recent listings, and even just the large list of listings we do see, does get me hopeful for the future. I definitely have had some concerns as to whether or not Bethesda can fix all the lingering problems, but also deliver the product of Wastelanders come this November, but if they are expanding or using additional assets to achieve this goal, hopefully it does actually get accomplished. But of course, that's definitely the glass half full way of looking at things, that these are additions to the team meant to grow its overall size. Alternatively, these could all be replacements. Maybe Bethesda is doing some internal firing or changing up of the development team behind Fallout 76 due to some of these lingering problems. There's nothing really to support that one way or another, but of course with new job hirings that always is the potential. But a couple of other interesting observations about Fallout 76 itself are actually around these new vault raids. One user you may have heard about in the past is a streamer by the name of Austral Void. He streams Fallout 76 and he has a lot of those kind of world first or completing things 
things in very hard conditions. He was the first to reach level 100 in the nuclear winter mode, he was the first to complete the previous fault raid solo on expert, so he's clearly pretty talented, he has a pretty good idea of what he's doing around these. I'll have a link to his stream down below, it definitely is worth a watch, but something interesting, firstly, one strategy that has proved for him to actually be super handy in completing these vault raids is completing them on survival mode. In Fallout 76, there are servers for adventure mode, but separate servers for survival mode. Since survival mode has so few players, the server stability and the lag you experience is actually much better. And this has actually become a consistent strat from many people trying to get consistent runs on expert mode. And actually, in fact, for the most recent vault raid, almost required to even have a chance at completing it on expert mode. Which speaking of, at least as of the time of recording this video, and it is subject to change, I haven't heard of one singular instance of somebody actually successfully completing this vault at all on expert mode. That specifically being around the most recent vault raid that is particularly tedious, having a lot of steps that are dependent on server stability and lag can affect them, but specifically from this streamer. Somebody that was able to complete the previous vault raid solo on expert mode can't actually complete the latest one with a team of four that are coordinated all with mics on expert mode. I think that really speaks the difficulty difference in this most recent mode and how much of a problem it kind of is. It's definitely something that has to be looked at or something probably has to be changed. I'm all for a high barrier to entry or making things difficult at the end game, but this might just be way too difficult, especially for the rewards that we talked about a little bit earlier in this video. With all that being said, one final thing to note, another handy tool that you might use if you're one of the people still playing this game, I don't know how many of you are, that is going to be Map76. This is a recent fan-made map tool, and there's been a lot of maps for Fallout 76, but this one's actually quite a bit different. What the person behind this did was actually data mine the raw location spawns for some of the items in this game, and then put them on a map. So if you're looking for something very specific, such as a specific weapon, what this will show you is, based on the files of Fallout 76, where that weapon might spawn. As of yet, it isn't quite comprehensive, not including exactly everything, and it's specifically meant for rare items, not some of the more common things. But if you are looking for something specific and rare, there's another valuable resource to keep in mind. And just in general, it's a good tool to have in the back of your head in case you ever need to find something. Either way, taking that all together, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Vault 76 is kind of an interesting spot right now. We're at a middle ground or crossing. The past two DLCs for the game haven't been super successful. The vault raids were met with quite a bit of controversy, mostly because they had genuine problems showcasing why instable servers or some of these crashing bugs just aren't acceptable with vault raid content. And it's pretty obvious that the battle royale mode as of late just needs some more love. The player base is low. It's really hard to find a server ever having over 30 people. And when the map's made to be experienced with 50, this really affects gameplay. It makes it a lot slower paced. So hopefully with the next few updates, we start seeing improvements, changes to both of these things. We know there are going to be additional updates to the vault raids, to the battle royale mode, and maybe things will start to improve. But now we're slowly starting to transition to a middle period in between this current DLC and Wastelanders. So hopefully we gradually start to see additional and further updates around stability to really set a nice stage for Wastelanders to succeed and not have to worry about these same issues. As always again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.